right, so this is going to be recorded. If you would like a copy of the recording to rewatch or to pass along to whomever you need, reach out to the person that brought this meeting to your attention. So whether it be, um, you know, your, your sales manager or one of our manufacturer reps or factory guys, I will provide them with the recording link and they'll be able to pass it along to you. It'll be available for eternity for you to watch three years from now, three weeks from now, or whenever you want. So I think that just about does it. Again, Justin Allaire of EWC Controls. Trey Miller, he is the, uh, the gentleman that will be leading this training. So only he and I can speak. And at this point, I'm going to pass the tray to kick it off for the SBD training. All right, gentlemen. Glad you could make it. Today's going to be exciting because the SBD is exciting. First of all, we're EWC Controls. It stands for Excellence Without Compromise. Great name. <laughs> My name is Trey Miller. I'm a Southeast Regional Manager. I predominantly cover the Southeast. That's Florida up to North Carolina, but over to Arkansas, down to Louisiana. So very in tune with cooling, gentlemen, and heating also, but cooling, dehumidification, these are a lot of the things that we have a problem with down in the, in the South, and we're gonna take care of those, okay? First of all, the smart bypass damper. Guys, I tell you, it's working 13 years for a distributor. From a distributor standpoint, from a manufacturer's rep standpoint, guys, this is a product that has changed everything. If you have your guys who've done zoning in the past, and they're not happy with it, or they don't think it works, the reason being is because they were not maintaining airflow through the system at all times. ACA will tell you the only way to make zoning work properly is to make sure the unit doesn't know it has zoning on it. So therefore, this smart bypass damper has a built-in digital manometer. With a push of a button, we can capture the design static and maintain it whether I'm in first stage, second stage, heating, cooling, any zone combination. So gentlemen, the, 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 <laughs> the opportunity here is if in retrofit, especially, if you have a duct system that's in good shape, you put this in, if I maintain design static, the unit doesn't even know it has zoning on it. Therefore, we dehumidify, we run with the, the same efficiency, we increase latent cooling effect, we reduce temperature and cooling, increase temperatures and heating, and I'll explain that as we go through the system. First of all, let's just look at zoning in, in general and bypass in general. We've got a We've got a 900 CFM living area. We've got a 300 CFM sleeping area. Every night you go to bed, why in the world am I gonna heat and cool the entire home? So I'll shut this damper and I'll blow 1200 CFMs through ductwork size for 300. Of course that's wrong. You cannot. We have to release the excess pressure. This is where we will use the bypass damper, a smart bypass damper and bypass the air right back into the return. Now we also have variable speed air handlers. Variable speed air handlers have been around for a long time. A lot of us have to have that for the efficiency on our equipment. The beauty of a variable speed air handler, especially in cooling, is it has what's called an enhanced mode. But the enhanced mode is what it's going to do is it's actually increasing dehumidification by slowing the fan speed down, allowing the coal to get colder, pulling more moisture out of it. Guys, we don't want to have to buy dehumidifiers. We don't have to want to have to add a lot of extra equipment. The beauty of zoning is when I bypass the cold air across the coil, guys, I'm doing the same thing as you're doing in enhanced mode. So you can take it out of enhanced mode. The, when we pre-cool the coil, I'm gonna increase your latent cooling effect. We'll shorten our run time with the same efficiency. Now, let's look at it in cooling. Okay, the nice thing about cooling, every night I go to bed, I'm gonna cut the living area off. I'm just diverting the BTUs to the sleeping area. And at all that CFM and capacity that was going to the living area, I will bypass mixing it with my return air right back across the coil. As I do this, I'm going to drop the temperature of the coil. If I drop the temperature of the coil, I will also drop my discharge. And gentlemen, if I drop my discharge, then I reduce the runtime on the condenser outside. This is a win-win scenario for everybody. It keeps the system running less, it increases your dehumidification, and it allows you to raise your temperature in the home with the same comfort because we are controlling the dehumidification. Now, if we look at this, you're looking at a, um, 
you know, you see what we did in cooling. Let's take a look at what we do in heating. In heating with a heat pump or gas furnace. Guys, every night I go to bed, I'm gonna shut down that living area, divert the BTUs through the sleeping area. If I keep in a heat pump, if I keep bypassing this hot air across the coil, what am I gonna do to the temperature of the coil? I'm gonna raise it. If I raise the temperature of the coil, I raise my discharge temperature. Gentlemen, if I raise my discharge temperature, I've reduced the runtime, and now I'm running as efficiently as the system can run. This is a beauty, and the beauty of it also is no longer am I giving you a 92, 94, 96 degree discharge temperature. I've increased that discharge temperature to 110 and a little bit above. This is doing nothing but diverting the BTUs to the areas of need rather than have to share them through the entire home. These are tremendous advantages for the homeowner. And as far as a contractor, makes him look like he's a pretty smart guy, okay? So guys, talk about this. This really excites the homeowner. Now, where do I install the bypass? First of all, gentlemen, this gotta be the first takeoff. There's no exceptions here. It has to be equal to or in front of all takeoffs. If you don't have it like that, then guess what we've done? We're not gonna balance the system out. It's gotta be equal to or in front of all takeoffs. That way we can balance it. But then where do we tie it into the return? That's been a problem for years. And this is what you used to see all the time. And it says, do not do this. But gentlemen, let me tell you, with a barometric weighted arm bypass, if it's already installed with this type of ductwork, of course, with the bypass tied in at the beginning of the plenum, that's the majority of my return static is at the first takeoff. So I don't want that. But from a retrofit standpoint, the neat thing is, gentlemen, pull this barometric bypass off, put in a smart bypass. And I've had guys telling me all over my territory, this simple little solution takes care of the problem. And therefore, we've maintained the bypass. We've restricted too much bypass air from going through. We've eliminated the sweating. And we've made sure we've got great mixture. This is the way I would love to see it if we're doing it new construction or if we have the opportunity to do some retrofit duct work. Tying my bypass at the back of the plenum, building the majority of the return static on the returns itself. Therefore, I'm filling in what the returns are not producing. Now, that is another neat thing about the SBD, because the SBD has opposed blades, which is gonna create turbulence. The turbulence is gonna force the mixture, which is gonna allow us to not flood the unit with too much bypass air, allowing us to make sure we get the right amount of bypass, only filling in what the unit is pushing. Now guys, if you ever have a chance to use a mixing box, what happened? A mixing box is by far the best application if you have the space to do it. Why? I must have a timer on there. Why? Because I'm mixing the air in the return box here. I've also guaranteed I've created turbulence. <laughs> and it's going, it's, I'm sorry guys, I'm having a little technical difficulty. But the mixing box mixes the air, pulls it mixed through, we're creating the turbulence, but you don't always have this much room. So you do have a bypass, and this is in the closet application. Sitting on a platform, if you're sitting on a platform pulling return air through a louver door, guys, this is beautiful. I've got hundreds of these working in the Georgia market and working without any problem. And the beauty of it is, guess what? I just eliminated the number one problem you have with closet applications, sweat and air handler. How did I eliminate the sweating? I conditioned the closet. Now, this is not something you want to do with a gas furnace because the inspector will look at you like you lost your mind because of combustion air. But if we're dealing with a heat pump or maybe a 90% furnace with a um, concentric duct kit, you could work with this. But this is a great application, especially in tight closets when we don't have any return duct work to tie into. But let's just say we have a gas furnace or we are not allowed and we have no way to do this, no way to connect the supply to the return, what we can do is go to our hallway or go to an area and dump the air, the bypass air into an area where, where we're pulling return. This makes things a lot easier. Guys, it makes it very nice as far as it, God, 
makes it very nice as far as the way this goes. And let me tell you, you can do this in any job. Just make sure you get that bypass there where you need it. Now, guys, you can run a bypass anywhere you want. But the most efficient thing to do is to get it back across the coil. That's pre-cooling the coil, pre-heating the coil, reducing the runtime. Now, let's review the advantages of using a bypass in the return. One, guys, we're going to maximize the efficiency of every BTU produced. Every second that condenser runs, I'm only delivering the air to the areas of the home that need it. This is why I think zoning should be a standard in our industry. We should talk to people about this all the time. The only time you can't do U zoning and retrofit is if you can't access the ductwork. And I'm not a guy who's gonna tell you to bury, bury dampers in ductwork because you have to be able to access it for service in case we have a problem or a scenario. Even though our dampers don't go bad very often, you still may need to service them every now and then. Advantageous discharge temperatures. Gentlemen, I'm gonna be cooler and cooling, warmer and heating which does nothing but resort in shorter run times for your customer. Does nothing but save them money. Guys, I'm unloading the compressor. If I'm pre-cooling the coil, the unit doesn't have to work as hard to give you the beat to use as a design to. This is a huge advantage and only available if you tie your bypass into the return. This allows us to increase dehumidification, reduce the run time, and it makes your house a lot more comfortable because we all know the key to cooling is dehumidification. That's what makes us comfortable. Guys, I'm gonna keep constant airflow through the system. Like I said, with the SBD, we're gonna capture design static. This is huge. It hasn't been done before. This changes the ball game. If I can keep constant airflow through the system at all times, the unit doesn't know it has zoning on it. By keep maintaining the design static, that the system was designed with. That particular system, that particular duct system, that's the beauty of this. If you have a bad duct system, guys, hey, we know airflow is the key. Proper airflow means our system works properly. If you don't have the right airflow, we have problems. I'm sure every tech rep who's ever gone out with you 95% of the time, when he comes back and tells you what the problem is, he tells you it's airflow and you're like, well, I got my returns, I got my supplies, but guys, if we don't have the right airflow, the unit is not gonna work the way it's supposed to. This is why the SBD is so imperative and so important in install installations in today's zoning system, especially with the efficiency of today's systems. And guys, unparalleled dehumidification. This is huge. One thing I highly recommend, when you put this in retrofit, which you will sooner or later, but when you start putting this in retrofit, make sure you blow out your drain line. Make sure you change the P-trap. The mud daubers that have climbed in there and built that, there is no more drip, drip, drip from your drain line. You've got a steady stream of water pouring out, guys. We're getting a little rid of a lot more moisture, and this is the key to an efficient system and to comfort. Now, we could always dump the air I've heard this for years, use a dump zone, dump an entrance floor, mechanical room, basement, dump zone. But gentlemen, if we do that, we don't get to take advantage of these six items. And I think if you look at these six items, they're pretty strong claims. But this is exactly what we can do with a properly installed zoning, with a properly installed zoning system. So keep that in mind, guys. Now, ACA Manual ZR. If you don't know this, ACA Manual ZR has now been written for the HVAC industry. This deals with all zoning systems. EWC was chosen by ACA out of all the zoning manufacturers to help write the requirements for proper air zoning strategies. Bypass Delta P will come into play in the future. Gentlemen, this is where we started looking at it with ACA and we found some, we had found some things that were pretty common. One, the bypass is the first takeoff. It's predominantly the shortest takeoff. And it's one of the largest takeoffs. Air is just like water, it's dumb. It takes a path of least resistance. So all the air wants to go down our bypass. We don't want that. We want the air to go down the duct system. This is why these barometric bypasses, weighted arms, and especially that Tonka toy cranky thing that they have out there, you know, that you're dialing up made in Mexico. <laughs> That's not exactly the, the most accurate thing in the world to, to, to use. That's why we want to use the digital manometer to control our airflow because we know airflow is the most important thing in our system. 
So guys, this is where we started looking at this and this is where we figured out we had to create some turbulence. We had to create some restriction to keep the bypass from being the path of least resistance. This is a huge, huge undertaking. Well, it was, a, it was a huge discovery and has really made a big difference. Now, if you get into some of the older barometrics, which I don't really, I don't recommend at all. I mean, if you've got the answer to your problems, why not use it? But if you do, then you have to use a hand damper and you got to, well, let me show you how we did that. We go right here. This is what I used to have to train on. I have to teach guys how to use a digital manometer. Basically what I'm doing is I'm putting my two pedo tubes in. Instead of hooking them to my electronic bypass, I'm going to tie them to a manometer. I'm going to cut the system on with all zones open, make sure I'm in high fan speed. Then I'm going to check my static pressure. As you see here, we're at a 0.51 static. We've got a good duct system there. Now to balance it out, I have to go down, shut off the bypass. I mean, open up the bypass, shut the smallest zones that are, the only zone that we want to call is the smallest zone, shut the other zones. Now we're going to cut the system on with the bypass open, go to the hand damper and slowly turn the hand damper to where we can meet the static pressure. Now our system is balanced. The beauty of the SPD guys, you don't need your $35 mechanic out there to balance the system out. You don't need him to pull out his manometer out of his bag. You don't even need him to pull it out of his truck. You can have your installer push a button. Let me show you what we're going to do with the smart bypass damper. This is what we've got. We're going to have a call from all zones. Make sure you get into high fan speed. Once you're in high fan speed, let it run for three to five minutes. Make sure our ductwork is pressurized. Gentlemen, all you have to do is push the flashing yellow light. The light will flash yellow to let you know that we're ready for setup. Once you push the light, the damper will close. Take an external static pressure reading across the system. Then it will open. Take another external static pressure across the system. Goes through its algorithm, gentlemen. It goes to the first measurement. It captures it and maintains it no matter what. If we lose power, whatever the case may be, it's going to go right back to design static to make sure your system is running efficiently. Now, let's just say something happens and we push the button too soon or it doesn't set up properly. If we push the button too soon, guys, all we have to do is pull the two tubes off of the manometer from the motor, hit the button again. It'll go back to factory setting, plug the tubes back in, and let's go again. Now, let's just say we push the button, it goes through its algorithm, and instead of the light going out, the yellow light going out, the light continues to flash. This means that our bypass is too big. So we have to make some adjustments on the bypass to make it smaller. Look in the top right-hand section of your installation instructions, it'll tell you, you're gonna go to the, you're gonna go to the screw on the hash mark on the U-bolt, we're gonna turn that and make the damper smaller, minimum open. So therefore we've just gone from a 14 inch bypass to a 12 inch bypass. Push the button again, and then it should set up. But guys, this is a beautiful thing too, because now we don't have to worry about oversizing a bypass. It's gonna make you put the right size bypass in. And I think if you look at back at your complaints and things like that, a lot of people have a problem getting the bypass set up properly. One, they don't wanna mess with the manometer. They don't want to check it. They just want to set it halfway and expect it to work. Or like with the Tonkatoy Cranky, they're going to set it at a 0.5 and think that's going to keep their system in a half inch total static. It's not the way it works, guys. This is going to capture true design static with the accuracy of a digital manometer and maintain it 365, 24-7. That's exactly what we want to happen. So when I'm only calling from these two zones, where my pointer go? I'm only calling from this zone and this zone. These are shut. I'm going to deliver the exact same static pressure through these runs as I would if all four of them were calling because I've captured design stack and maintaining it no matter what the scenario is in the duct system. This makes sure our system runs at peak efficiency at all times. Okay. Well, how you hook up the bypass, you're going to have to have pitot tubes. The pitot tubes, here's one of the supply. One of the return. We want them to be somewhere between one and two feet from the plenum itself. I mean, from the unit itself to make sure we're getting a good static pressure reading across the system. Because guys, this is what's gonna set up the entire system. Now, 
let's just say that we put our pitot tubes in a place and we're reading a different static. That's not necessarily the end of the world because whatever it captures in whatever position it's in, that's what it's going to go back to. So that's going to maintain that static that it captured, which as long as we don't have air noise in our home and everything, we should be okay. This is another system. Here's your supply tube and here's your return. Now, if we have a, if we have a, a if we have a filter in here, what we want to do is make sure we're reading it through the filter. Cause if the filter clogs up, I want to make sure that we take care of this. Now guys, the most important slide of the day is here. Bypass decisions. Guys, you've got to ask yourself, please don't try to beat this because if you do, you'll probably lose. But if you follow these guidelines, you should not have problems with the system. What type of equipment am I using? If I'm using single stage, I know I have to bleed to keep my bypass airflow down. Smallest zone is 35 to 40% of the total airflow. Gentlemen, that's not a six inch run. It's not an eight inch run unless you're on a really small system. 35 to 40%. And if, you, if your zone is smaller than that, we're gonna have to bleed to get to that 35% to make sure we don't flood the bypass, create sweating and create problems. Now the answer <laughs> is multi-stage equipment. Multi-stage equipment. It's beautiful because I have low fan speed. Now I can go down to 20 to 25% of the total capacity for my smaller zone. The neat thing about this is now we're into the master bedroom, master bath. And guys, that's one of the biggest zones in my mind is one thing we all do, we all sleep in our bedroom, we all wanna be comfortable while we're sleeping. Everybody should, in my mind should have a thermostat in their bedroom to make sure they're comfortable for one third of their life while they're sleeping. And this helps you with this here. But with multi-stage equipment, the low fan speed allows you to go down to that 20 to 25% for the smaller zone. Now, what's kind, of, what's kind of funny is we go to communicating systems, which is newest craze, with communicating systems, and they tout no bypass, no bypass. Well, without a bypass, our smaller zone is 33%. We're almost right where we were at with the single-stage piece of equipment. The problem is, if you don't have a bypass, the system can't drop the fan speed below 33%. Therefore, we've got problems if our small zone is smaller. Then we're gonna to have to use a bypass or we're gonna over condition the areas or over condition the zones. And in some of these communication systems, you have no control over it, it does what it wants. Some of them you can wait, but then again, guys, to me, the best value is your two-stage equipment with a smart bypass damper and you've got a one heck of an efficient system. But we do make, we do make the boards and we make the dampers for a lot of the communicating systems and installed properly, they work very good also. Now, let's take a look at a home. This is a ranch home. And I wanna go over this to let you know how we can do this. First of all, total CFM in the system is 1170. Our smaller zone is 410 CFM. Where did I get to 410? That's 35% of my 1170. This is with the single stage piece of equipment. So 410, is gonna be my smallest zone. If I want a two zone system, my sleeping area is 530. My living area is 640. Both 640 and 530 above 410, gentlemen, you put in a two zone zoning system, no bleed, you're ready to go. But now let's take it a step further. Let's give us a zone in the master bedroom. Now, if I have a master bedroom, spare bedrooms and living area, my smallest zone in the house now is 240 CFMs. That's these three rooms here, okay? 240 CFMs is smaller than the 410. Subtract the 240 from the 410, that gives me 170 CFMs. All I've got to do is bleed 170 CFMs to the living area, gentlemen, and I've got a perfect system. It works beautiful. This is all we have to train our contractor on how to do. And then he doesn't have sweating. He doesn't have problems. The problem we have is guy goes in and wants a six inch zone, no bypass. I mean, I mean, six inch zone, too much bypass, sweating, short cycling, cycling on limit. That's not what we want. Now, another thing that you can do too, and I've done in my house, is to get a little less bypass if you need it for your small zone. We can go to the, we can go to the bathrooms 
and keep them open zones. That's going to give me ADC a film extra. So you can do that with the bathrooms in the house and usually pick up 870 to 80 CFM per bathroom, which helps you minimize the bleed, okay? Now let's look at the real hard one. The hard one here, the two-story home, five-ton unit, room above the garage with an eight-inch run, 230 CFM. Well, total CFM in the system is 2,000. Smallest zone in the so small zone in the home is 230. My smallest zone that I can have at 35% of the 2,000 is 700. Okay, subtract the 230 from the 700, which gives me 470 CFM of bleed from the larger zones. I'd probably split 270 upstairs, 200 downstairs. Guys, it's not going to overcondition the area but you have given them a house that's so much more comfortable than anything they had before. And to tell you the truth, with a thermostat down here in the living area, the bonus room is pretty much inoperable. It's too hot. Unless they're gonna put a windy unit or a mini split or something like that in there, which a lot of guys do. And let me tell you something, guys. Mini splits, they're called ductless split system. It's where you can't get duct. Guys, for the cost of the condenser and the disconnects, I can zone the whole house, not just one room. So keep that in mind when you think the easiest thing to do is just sell them a mini split. If you can access the ductwork guys, putting in a zoning system is a lot less expensive and a heck of a lot more efficient. And the value is there. You're giving them zoning through the whole home, not just one room, okay? Guys, if you offer zoning with a bypass to your customers, you can overcome all major objections with one product. Comfort issues, uneven temperatures, infiltration, stratification. We have no control. Where do I control the comfort from? I have no diversion of the BTUs to the areas of need. How about humidity? I'm going to give you a colder coil with the bypass, the SBD, dehumidification, and improved comfort. You've got capacity issues, entertaining. What do you do with entertaining? We don't put any people in our, in our, in our living room, in our family room. We put the people in the bedroom when we do a load. So basically, if we have 15, 20 people over our house, they're miserable. The nice thing is go to the sleeping area or go to the other zones, cut them off, divert the BTUs into that area. This allows you to entertain with comfort. Load changes, upstairs, downstairs, east, west exposures. How about long runs? You got a 25 foot run and the rest of them are about six, eight, 10 feet. That long run never gets satisfied. If I put a thermostat on the wall, and guys, that's one thing. I can solve any problem temperature-wise by just putting a thermostat in that area. It's going to continue to call until it's satisfied. But with load changes, we take care of that. Long runs, we can take care of that also because it's going to continue to call until that long run zone is satisfied. Seasonal issues, extreme conditions. It's funny, in Florida, they say, oh, you don't need heating in Florida. You most certainly do because at night it's 40 degrees, 50 degrees. And we have cinder block construction. You get up in the morning, it's cold in your house. <laughs> and instead of having to cut on your electric furnace or your heat pump for the whole house, you just go to the room that you're going to get in until about 8, 9 o'clock in the morning. Then you can open up your doors and it's, it's warm enough outside to keep everybody comfortable. It makes a lot of sense, guys. Mild demand, spot cooling and heating on mild days. Just to get the run time up enough to get the humidity out to keep you more comfortable. It makes it a lot easier if you don't have to do it in the whole house and it helps pull the, pull the room down a lot quicker. Cost issues. We've got fewer units and accessories. One larger unit rather than two smaller units. Fewer accessories for fewer units. Operating expense. Diver diverting the BTUs is more efficient. You're pre-cooling and heating the system, which results in shorter run times, which does nothing but save your customer money. Guys, this is exciting. John told me about this and I've been waiting, but the SBD2 is on its way. And let me show you what that is. First of all, you're gonna have NFC, near frequency um, correspondence. The beauty of it there, guys, is you touch your phone to the motor, it's gonna give you a readout, just like you see here, differential pressure, set point, total bypass active, 
You can go up here, find out what your fan run time is. You can find out all the information on your system. And if you want to, you can send it to John and he'll show you. He can help you diagnose the problem right from the app. It makes it extremely informative, guys. And if you've got your guys out there, high-end guys that want to put in zoning or want to, you know, do some high-end equipment, this is beautiful. Now, another thing that's neat is that we've made it even easier because now we're going to have a module. The module is reusable. All you have to do is put it on your NFC motor, on any Belimo NFC motor. It will give you the information right through your Bluetooth. All you do is hook your Bluetooth up to the module, and then you can go down and get out of the attic and go down in the house, and you can read all your information from the house. It makes it extremely nice. And then all you do is pull that module off, put it in your bag, take it to your next job, and stick it on the next motor and read it there. So a small investment. And now, guys, we have digital readout of what our digital manometer is doing. Now, imagine that. Every system you have an SBD2 installed on, you're going to have a readable digital manometer installed on your duct system, allowing you to fine tune and do whatever adjustments you need because you know exactly what's going on in the system. Guys, I can tell you, I've had a lot of fun with the, I've had a lot of fun. I've had a lot of fun with the, uh, with the SBD. To me, it's the product that you want to take in and show your customers. Contractors, Guys, if you get a chance to use this, use it once, you'll never go back to anything again. Because that's all what all my guys have said, and that's all I really talk about. As a matter of fact, I tell guys a lot of times, if you're not going to use the SBD, just don't put it in zone. Why not use it? If you have the, the thing that makes it work perfectly, or as good as it can possibly work, because I don't know what's more accurate in our industry other than a digital manometer, that's what you should use. Guys, have a lot of fun with this. Enjoy it. And have fun selling because once people buy this, they like it, and you're their best friend. So that's pretty much all I've got there. Back to EWC. Justin, do you have anything else you'd like me to cover, or do we have any questions? Or There were a couple questions, but they were all addressed. Uh, so I think we have that all covered. Guys, this is uh, – again, thanks, Trey. That was awesome. Appreciate <laughs> it. Um, what, what we're going to be doing is, again, it's recurring weekly. We're going to be able to use the same link – that you use to access this meeting. So same time, same place next week, we'll do the same thing. Um, I will get an updated topic out to everybody, but uh, we appreciate you being here. We have it recorded. So again, if you want a copy, reach out to your sales rep who put you in touch with us for this meeting. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again, same time, same place next week. Thank you, gentlemen.